Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box. In this week's video, we are going to take a look at two plugins by Klanghelm, being the DC1E3 compressor and the IV GI2 saturation and distortion plugin. Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box. I am your host Smudge and in this week's video we are going to take a look at a couple of plugins from a company called Klanghelm. Now Klanghelm are a small company based out of Berlin in Germany and they are a company that produces some fantastic sounding plugins. A question that I'm frequently asked is, do I have any recommendations on plugins for people on low budgets or looking for free plugins that are great sounding or will really help them with their masters? Klanghelm fit that bill perfectly. So I thought I'd take a quick look at the Klanghelm website and just to give you an idea of the costings of some of the plugins, their most expensive plugin at the time of recording is 24 euros which equates to 22 pounds or 28 dollars so these are some fantastic low cost plugins but tony also offers some freeware plugins of which the two plugins i'm going to feature today are both free I really wanted to take a look at the IV GI2 saturation plugin and see how I could use some saturation in mastering. But I was also really intrigued with the DC 1A3 compressor because I really think it has some great benefits that can help us with mastering our tracks. So let's take a look at the DC 1A3 plugin first. So just going to start with the layout of the plugin itself. I really like the minimalist look of the layout. It's very reminiscent of a vintage style compressor where you would use the input and where you boost the input, not only will it add the compression, it will add volume. And then what we can do is then use the output to reduce the volume that we've applied to get a balanced sound. This is very much in the style of a more vintage style compressor, but it's fair to say that the DC-1E3 is very much its own beast and it is not an analog emulation. And what I also like about this plugin is there are a couple of additions which make it super versatile for mastering. And if you want to use this plugin for mixing, certainly if you want to use it for any parallel compression, there is a mix knob as well, which makes this just that extra little bit more versatile. So for this week's sound example, we are using the song Spread Your Wings by Nick Grayswell. This song is featured on the EP Songs to Drink To, and I'll leave links in the description down below. I had great fun mastering this EP, and I'd highly recommend you check it out. In terms of additional processing, we've just got a little bit of multiband dynamics going on. There's a touch of the EQ using Pro EQ, just making some gentle adjustments. And then we've got the limiter in the master channel, which is not only preventing the clipping, it's just adding some overall volume. So let's take a listen to the trap. I've already adjusted the input and output just to save a bit of time. We'll start in bypass. I'll then activate the plugin and we can see what the DC-1A3 is capable of on this song. Hey, 
So we have the DC 1A3 at the beginning of our mastering chain, and it's a good tip to put it at the beginning of the mastering chain just to give us that overall glue and cohesion that we're looking for. The downside is if we've got a compressor that is a little bit over aggressive, then it just may need a little bit taming. And one of the things I love about this plugin is we have the relax button. Now, when we're using this with the relaxed button bypassed, we're getting around about minus three dBs worth of gain reduction. This is probably a little bit more than I'd like. So what we can do is use the relax button to really soften that compression. So let's take another listen with the relax button engaged. We'll then bypass it and we can then get a comparison as to what this actually does in real time. So it is really just softening that compression. And when we look at the visuals, rather than hitting around the minus 3 dB mark for the game reduction, it's softening it and coming just over the minus 2 dB mark. So it's just making it more rounded and balanced for a mastering purpose. So to really add to the versatility of this plugin, we also have the benefit of a deep button, which in essence works as a side chain. One of the biggest grumbles I hear from people who are new to mastering is they will start to add compression and they will then end up with that undesirable pumping sound. There is a general misconception that that pumping comes from too much low end, which isn't always the case. Generally what I find is it's too much compression of the low end rather than actually having too much low end. So what we can really do with this plugin is use the deep button to act as a side chain. And the side chain is in essence just not going to compress all of the low end. It will compress more of the mid range and the upper levels rather than compressing all of the low end and give us that undesirable desirable pumping. So let's take another listen to this track. We'll engage the deep button, we'll then bypass it and we can see how we can use that to our benefit as well. So it really just softens up the sound once again. It's not applying that undesirable pumping that we're going to get from the low end. That kick's not going to be hit us in the face, especially in a song like this. It's more of a mellow song. We don't want the, the you know the kick to be punching our heads in all the time so it really just gives us that more mellow compression it takes the compression away from the low end and it gives us a more balanced sound and as we can see from the visuals there we've even just even taken it from that minus 2.2 db around to minus one and a half db so it's much more balance for the overall mastering sound that we're trying to achieve Next up, let's take a look at the IVGI2 plugin, which is a saturation and distortion plugin. One of the biggest challenges we face is when we master in the digital domain, one of the criticisms can be that we make the sounds too clean because everything is precise in its nature. We don't have the irregularities of some of the hardware units. So when we master in the digital domain, things can sound too clean. So what we can then do is use subtly saturation to give us some more character in our masters. Now, whilst I like the wide range of drive available with this plugin, so you can really crank it and get some heavily distorted and saturated sounds if you want, I really like using this in a very subtle way. So in this example, I've got the drive set to two, 
But what we can also do is, once again, like we did with the DC1A3, we have the addition of the relax button, which just makes the overall saturation much more subtle. And it just gives that additional character without making things sound forced. It's not forcing the saturation of the sound, it's much more subtle. And then we can add to the overall versatility of this plugin by using the ASIM mix control. And what this is going to do is all the way to the left, it's going to give you a symmetrical saturation, which is going to be a more heavier compressed sound. Or you can move it all the way to the right, which is going to give you an asymmetrical saturation style, which is going to be much more transparent. And then the other thing I like about this is the response. The response control really gives you the ability to shape the saturation. So if you put it in the middle at N, it's going to give you a very much a neutral response. If you move it all the way to the left at the LF, which is the low frequencies, it's going to really saturate the low end and give you that added compression in the low end. Well, we don't really want that in this particular sample. So I've moved it more to the right at HF, which is going to focus on the high frequencies now what this is going to tend to do is emulate more of a tape saturation style but it's also going to just tame that top end it can be really useful for DSing. so let's take a listen to the plugin we'll activate the plugin first we'll then bypass the plugin and then we can see how the different settings compare so let's take a listen So what I really like about this plugin and the way it acts in this song is not only is it giving that subtle saturation, it's adding energy to the song, it's adding that character, it's just giving some more overall weight and just, just makes it sound more pleasing to, to my ears. So I'd really recommend checking this plugin out because it can just really elevate your overall masters. So that's it for this week's video. I really hope you check these plugins out. Klanghelm are renowned for making some really high quality plugins. And I'm really pleased I come across these two particular examples for use in mastering because they are great. Certainly with a DC1A3 compressor, it is very versatile. And whilst it, it very much kind of reminiscent of a more vintage style compressor, I love the fact that it is very much its its own thing and it's very very versatile with the deep and relaxed options to really be beneficial for mastering purposes and then once again with the ivgi2 just to add that overall character to your tracks and make things sound a little bit less digital it just can really bring your masters to life. So check them out. I'll leave some links in the description down below. And don't forget, these are 100% free plugins. They won't cost you a penny. So I hope you liked this week's video. If you liked it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below. And don't forget to click the bell and select the option for all so you receive notifications on releases of all of our videos moving forward. I look forward to seeing the next video coming real soon. And all that's left for me to say is I hope you'll keep safe and well.